Hey everyone, Mike on Monday coming to you. So a handful of things that I wanted to cover today. Uh, one, uh, behind me is some rye and you can see that the heads are tipping and such. We're real close to uh, the combining stage here. Again, we're in Plymouth, Wisconsin. We're a little behind a lot of other locations uh, in our trade territory, but uh, the small greens are progressing. Uh, thank goodness for some of that rain to help try and finish that out. Um, so the, the wheat is also on, on the way. Uh, the, the big thing, as I talked uh, last week on, on leaf hoppers, again, I'm gonna pound the drum pretty hard. Leaf hopper pressure gets real high when we go into those high temperatures and, and the stress of that heat uh, on your crop. So all of a sudden you get population explosion so it's a double whammy, if you will, on those things. Uh, below me at my feet happens to be some uh, volunteer alfalfa growing. This is classic damage from potato leaf hopper. You get yellowing starting at the tip, working its way in, and as time progresses, you get a color change. This is the extreme. We want to avoid this. Uh, because this does have long-lasting effects on, on the crop. It isn't just hurting the next cutting, it's also impacting this stand for the, the life of the stand. Uh, uh, Undersander has proven that out over the years here, so you see these bugs, you take action, move quickly, uh, lots of options how to do that. Uh, if you're in the need for some micros into that that scenario we've got packages that we can put together to help you up with uh, some of the the micronutrients uh, for that crop at the same time um, lots of prevent plant questions and cover crop questions and to me they're kind of the same acre in a lot of cases so you can mechanically take care of weeds if you choose to uh, obviously rains that have hit the northeast Wisconsin is going to shut down uh, mechanical ways of controlling that for a while so the spray will be the the, the most uh, uh, the next option that comes at us the the soonest here so check with one of the agronomists at country visions if you've got some uh, weeds growing out there yes we can take down these ginormous things because we're not going to be in crop and that allows us as agronomists to put strategies together that can knock down bigger weeds uh, to help get that cleaned up. Uh, a lot easier than what the tillage will do as these weeds get bigger and bigger. Uh, finally, uh, we're starting to see tassels popping. Uh, so if you're thinking of using a fungicide, uh, if you're thinking of doing that by air or such, you know, get in touch with your agronomist from Country Vision so that we can get that all set up. Because uh, typically that window is fills up pretty quickly so do the 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 room on on the airplanes etc so with that give those give your agronomist a call let them know which fields you're thinking of doing that uh, great uh, excuse me tar spot is still part of the equation with uh, the the rains that we've been continuing to have as well as uh, our traditional diseases such as the gibberella the anthracnose etc those stock rots that also impact our crop. Um, you can use a fungicide as a technique to try and stretch out the harvest, especially if you're in a corn silage scenario where you're, you may have a lot of acres stacked on top of each other uh, for the harvest. Uh, I've got models that I've done so far and I'm trying to use that strategy to help buy us some more days to get more of those tons in the bunker at the right moisture at harvest time. Uh, with that, uh, enjoy the beautiful air. Uh, I wanna say congratulations to Chris and Jenny on their, their new baby. Uh, now I'm a grandpa for the second time. Uh, but with that, enjoy the weather. We'll talk to you next week.